Greetings, this is Bob Schmidt from the Applications Engineering Department with the latest edition of Technical Tips. Being that we're in the pulse business, there are a couple of definitions that would be really good if we understood solidly, and those are pulse width and rise time. What do we mean by those two items? For example, if your oscilloscope tells you that a pulse width is 5 nanoseconds, or a data sheet indicates that the pulse width of a product is 8 nanoseconds, what we really mean depends on how you view the pulse. It doesn't really look like this, but let's assume it does. This is the rise time, and this is the fall time. When we talk about pulse width, are we talking about this in here? Or are we talking about this width? It turns out neither. We're talking about FWHM, or full width at half maximum. This is the pulse width in typically nanoseconds. And uh, it's good to remember this because obviously these numbers will not give you the exact same uh, value. Um, we generally, in our small products, things like modules, tune them for minimum pulse width and maximum current. So you may find that uh, a particular design has a specification of for two or three or four nanoseconds. It's quite narrow. It may be at 40 or 50 amps. So these measurements are actually kind of critical to understand uh, exactly how the product works. The other item we want to talk about is rise time. Uh, ideally, we have a pulse that goes up instantly. Of course, that's not practical. The pulse will actually have some rise time to it. So how do we measure that? Is the rise time from here to here? No, given that there could be funny things happening, some overshoot and uh, some ringing. So what we really do is we take a point 10% up and 90% up and we refer to that as the rise time. So it's important to realize that because obviously the entire rise time from minimum to maximum current is going to be slightly more than that. We don't generally worry about fall time too much in the case of small modules because uh, essentially um, it's the leading edge that's important in LiDAR applications. Uh, the trailing edge may uh, last a little bit longer than the leading edge, uh, but typically uh, uh, that's not a concern in the kind of uh, circuits we're talking about here. And that's what I have.